Bula. Bula FM na mbandu ena sera na iwasi ningona ni pagatara ni sibiti kubi kianda na diwa ena tini na miniti ena maipakuriti ule bengi rabi na nanta nono mbo kanda na dhabiti kwa nino nono kaloko ena ikavende nda iwa bimina kata iwa libu ni maidhabiti kuna iwa ni mataka bo kuna ilibu sarati kuna visere tali oni ena namaka ndo batati kumaikini ena kiana nda urubo dhika namaki Bula binaka Baya wa salami lawa ndo batati kia wana pagatara na iwa ni viyo na kaloko moni tiki na warumbuka ena mbula FM na mbandu ena sere Tonight, self-employed man appears in court for alleged murder of Australian woman. Leaders visit good for Fiji, says Prime Minister Vorengam Bainiwarama. An Indian Air Force aircraft arrives in preparation for Prime Minister Modi's visit on Wednesday. Kulabinaka Fiji, I'm Edwin Nand. A 33-year-old self-employed man from Namasa village in Singatoka has appeared in the Nandi Magistrate's Court for allegedly murdering an Australian tourist. The case has been transferred to the Lotoka High Court and the accused has been remanded in custody. Christopher Chand reports. Lloyd Richard Senikau Dhava is alleged to have murdered Tracy Ann O'Brien Moore of Victoria, Australia on November 7th near Vunavutu village in Singatoka. The case was brought to Nandi due to the unavailability of a magistrate in Singatoka today. The vice is charged with one count of murder. He was apprehended by police last Friday after evading the authorities all week. In court this afternoon, the VAI requested legal aid assistance and also mentioned that he had not received the court disclosures. Police prosecutor Mohammad Chamim requested for the accused to be remanded in custody and made an application for the case to be transferred to the Lotoka High Court. Magistrate Wikarama Sekara has remanded the VAR for 14 days and set December 1st as the date for his appearance in the High Court. The VAR allegedly assaulted Mo and then strangled her before dumping her body in bushes around the Vunavutu village junction. A partially decomposed body was discovered by a farmer on November 10th, three days after her death. Police started searching for the VAR after they were informed that the pair had been drinking together on the night she died. The VAR was caught and charged on Friday. Christopher Chan, FBC News. This is a busy and important week in Fiji's foreign relations calendar as leaders of the two most populous nations in the world visit the country. Akosita Tale reports Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Marama says this is a great opportunity for the country. Narendra Modi heads a nation of more than 1.2 billion people, the largest democracy in the world, and President Xi Jinping rules a nation of 1.3 billion people. Together, India and China have more than 2.5 billion people within their borders, 36% of the world's population. And this week, these leaders are coming to Fiji. India and uh, China, as emerging global powers, wanting to also have more of a presence in the Pacific. They acknowledge us as a regional leader, a preeminent island nation that is also playing an increasing role on the wider global stage and having carried out substantive constitutional, legal and political reforms that have been applauded, commanded and accepted internationally. Fiji welcomes two of the world's greatest leaders and this visit symbolizes the country's new status in the global community and the recognition of our achievements. And they are coming to encourage us in our overall foreign policy objective of being friends to all and enemies to none. I will be telling them, the, telling them that there is room in the Pacific uh, for everyone of goodwill, for everyone willing to assist our island nations to reach their full potential. Baini Marama and his cabinet ministers are looking forward to hosting the two leaders. Prime Minister Modi recognizes the great historical link between India and Fiji and wants to help us develop our nation in a range of ways which we will discuss. I can also tell you that President uh, Xi and I will sign a number of uh, memorandums of understanding covering further assistance and cooperation with China. 
Prime Minister Modi is scheduled to arrive at Nausori Airport on Wednesday morning, while President Xi Jinping will arrive in Nandi on Friday afternoon. Akusita Tale, FBC News. An Indian aircraft uh, air force, uh, excuse me, an Indian air force aircraft arrived in the country this morning ahead of Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi's visit on Wednesday. The Ilyushin 76 MD, known as the Gajraj or King Elephant in the Indian Air Force Strategic Transport Fleet, it has vehicles believed to be bulletproof for Modi's entourage as well as his advanced security team. Modi, who's been described as India's political rock star, is the first Indian Prime Minister to visit the country in 33 years he will address parliament and will be accorded a full Fijian traditional welcome ceremony at Albert Park in Suva he is currently in Australia where he attended the weekend G20 summit in Brisbane the director of public prosecutions has closed the case against Josefa Mbilitaki who was alleged to have sent indecent and annoying text messages to the Prime Minister. Director of Public Prosecutions Christopher Pride says there is insufficient evidence of any wrongdoing and there will be no further action. Militaki also lodged a complaint that he'd been assaulted by some men he took to be military officers or police and that he'd been unlawfully detained by police in September. Pride says they've reviewed all evidence, including that from the doctor who examined Militaki. It's been concluded that there is insufficient evidence to proceed on a charge of assault and therefore there will be no further action. However, the DPP is concerned by the way in which Mbilitaki was arrested and held in custody for a trivial matter. Pride says the procedure for arrest is clear and he intends to raise this issue with the police commissioner. Coming up, land bank issues a total of 28 leases since its establishment in 2010. Great words there from Lucky Dube and Babana. Hope you enjoyed that number. Different colors just for you on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Louise with you on the center show. Well, thank you so much for the sweet company. This is Alana Miles, one of my favorites, and Black Velvet for you. Hi there. Join me on the center show every weekday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. for the best sounds on Gold FM. Only the classic hits. Welcome back. Fiji diplomats have been encouraged to place more emphasis on expanding trade, finance and investment links as part of their key objectives while serving overseas. Opening the heads of missions consultations in Suva today, Prime Minister Voreng Mbaini Marama says diplomats are important as Fiji is on the move to open for business. Akosita Tale has more. Okay, thank you. Fiji's global footprint continues to expand with 18 foreign missions and two consulate offices around the world. These ambassadors, high commissioners and consular generals have been urged to find opportunities for Fiji. Whether it is in uh, collaborating with new development agencies or finding financing uh, opportunities or establishing better relationship with uh, multilateral agencies, you must continue to push the boundaries and position Fiji. Don't wait for opportunities to come to you. You must create them for Fiji. However, the diplomats must remember to put Fiji's overall interests first and draw a line between attracting investors to Fiji and giving preferential treatment to maintain transparency and anti-corruption. So even though an import of some cheap product may improve your KPI or tie you up with some multinational corporation, it may be detrimental to our local industry <coughs> or bring in a new disease. You cannot pursue this. Bani Marama says he will be judging each ministry and their successes as it is very important. Yeah, look, look, we've achieved this every year. We've got to show. Otherwise, there's no point in being there and I'd be called home. And that, that's the bottom line. It's time for us to say, OK, what's the next chapter? So the, this meeting now, uh, we'll be looking at what we'll be doing over the next four years is exciting uh, new opportunities for Fiji. The Prime Minister also reminded the Foreign Affairs Ministry and the missions abroad to work closely, directly and collaboratively with the agriculture, trade and other ministries. The consultation ends tomorrow. Akusita Tale, FBC News. 
A 54-year-old taxi driver of Nambua Suva is in custody at the Mbar police station following the death of his 47-year-old wife in Bar yesterday. The incident occurred at around 1 p.m. in Wailaila in Bar, where, she's, where it's alleged the suspect stabbed the victim with a kitchen knife. The two had been separated since August this year. The victim was rushed to the Mbar Mission Hospital but was pronounced dead on arrival. Police investigators are trying to ascertain the circumstances surrounding the death of a 30-year-old man in Lotoka. The deceased was found lying in the compound of a taxi driver in Naikambula at around 4.30 yesterday morning and police have classified the death as murder. He was rushed to the hospital and admitted in the intensive care unit where he passed away a few hours later. The victim, who was, uh, no, who was not been identified, had visible injuries to his head. Officers are trying to determine how the victim ended up in the taxi driver's compound. The land bank based in the Lands Ministry has issued a total of 28 leases in the last four years. Established in 2010, the scheme allows landowners to give their land to the government to use for development and lease it at market rates. Wati Soni Raikandroka has more. Some of the land leases that have been allocated for farming. Others have been set aside for business development. So far, we have um, actually uh, 79 landowners in Fiji has actually have actually put their land in the land bank, and that amounts to about 8,578.9 uh, hectares. Eh? And out of that 79, up to date, we have actually issued uh, about 20. Eight leases, I think. Uh, uh, Twenty-eight leases. Naizengu Zengu adds some leases have been allocated for mining and for hotel development. The land bank is officially known as the Land Use Unit and is established under the Land Use Decree 2010. While landowners have indicated interest in leasing their land through the land bank, they have also come with a number of queries. As usual, there are also uh, complaints, uh, differences that actually come later. Uh, amongst the uh, landowners in terms of uh, uh, the money paid out to them. We actually, uh, now the experience that we have now that some landowners are actually uh, uh, engaging uh, consultants. So far, about $730 million worth of business has been generated from the leased land. At least another 40 matangalis or land owning units and tokatokas or extended family units have shown interest in depositing over 14,000 hectares with the land bank. What is on Rekondroka, FBC News. Today is designated World Premature Day and it's being observed for the first time in Fiji. Although the number of births of premature babies at Suva CWM Hospital is low, the Health Ministry believes there needs to be more awareness about preterm birth. Savaira Tambua has more. The arrival of a baby is one of the most joyous occasions for a family. However, for those who have had babies born premature, it can be a time of anguish. Colonia Williams knows all too well what it is like looking after a premature baby. First year we had our first uh, child, which we lost. She was born five months at the uh, Lampas Hospital. But uh, eight months later, we gave birth to Joy, who was born uh, six months premature. It was a very struggling journey. A total of 154 babies were born premature at CWM Hospital in Suva. 37 did not survive. Sister Kitty Natasera says the statistics this year is better than the previous years. Uh, that 117 that uh, were able to pull through, uh, we've calculated our percentage survival rate and it's uh, currently 76%, which I think is uh, very good compared to last year. A month-long campaign is now underway to create awareness about premature births. Simply the idea of doing this is to create prematurity awareness in our country and um, also how can we reduce premature birth, um, educate people on the problems asso associated with prematurity and uh, the care that can be provided in our intensive care and at home. The Ministry of Health is hoping that World Premature Day will become an annual event on its calendar. Sabaira Tambua, FBC News. And we turn to sports now. Here's Jamie with the latest. Thank you, Edwin. Good evening. Coming up, Ben Ryan names 20 member squad for Dubai and Port Elizabeth Sevens and Fiji under 20 football side ready for first game of the OFC President's Cup. This and more after the break.
you just joined us on the system after dark, this is a homegrown number courtesy of E3 and Cracker. Bula, how's it going? I'm D, your host on the system after dark, right here on Today FM. Today is hit music. You can catch me weeknights at 7 p.m. That's from Monday to Friday, only on the home of Today's Hit Music. And don't forget, that's D with you every weeknight on the system after dark. Welcome back. Vodafone Fiji Sevens coach Ben Ryan has named a 20-member squad to prepare for the Dubai and Port Elizabeth Sevens next month. Ryan has retained nine players from the Gold Coast Sevens, including Skepa Osea Kolinisau, Isake Katonimbao and Semi Kunatani. Also included as Carl Coast Sevens player of the tournament, Ilisoni Tavaingia of Police, recalled into the squad as New Zealand-based Wenga Chona Tuitonga. Ryan was happy with the talent on display at the Carl Coast Sevens that played a hand in his selection for the team. However, Ryan says one area, area that is of concern is the amount of game time the players have been exposed to over the past weeks. But what I don't want them to have is this fatigue from having played, some of them played Great Eight, Central Coast Sevens, uh, one or two went to Singapore Sevens, and then as well as Coral Coast. That's all between uh, Gold, Gold Coast and this tournament. And if you look at someone like New Zealand or England or Samoa, they wouldn't have played a single game of seven. So um, we've just got to be a bit wary that we don't uh, over-fatigue them. If I get the next week or so right, then we should be fine. The squad will march into camp at Uprising Resort in the Umba on Wednesday. It's game day for the Vodafone Fiji Under-20s at the OFC President's Cup in New Zealand. The side has been receiving great support from the Fijian community and they hope this will play a part in their quest at the tournament. Indra Singh, who is in Auckland for the tournament, files this report. Getting up close and personal to the silverware, which will be fought between the six teams from today and the Fijian youngsters are ready. The boys, they're looking forward to this tournament. Uh, going to Australia and coming to this uh, Britain Cup. The boys are very, they, they are gelling together with some of their New Zealand base and we are looking for the tournament. One of the reps who comes from a footballing family background says this team is a family rather than teammates. It's more like a family, like uh, everyone knowing each other. We, we've been in camp for last uh, one uh, two months, so we know the, uh, the combination between each other. The skipper adds they are ready to take on Amical, which will have four Fijians in their ranks, and it will be a tough encounter. Amical is a good team, no? They have uh, big strikers like Osea Kutalisau. It's from Fiji, and uh, we are looking forward. We'll make, uh, we'll put uh, Amical as a good team. The team is also banking on crowd support in the cold of Auckland to deliver a hot performance. Of course, yes. Uh, we, we got the support last time when we came in for the, quali uh, for the preparation for the qualifiers. And we would expect the same from uh, our Fijians here. Um, please, this is your team. This is not my team. This is not Frank's team or Fiji football team. This is your team. Come and support your team. Support the young brigade. They need your support during the game time. Time to step a mark in the very country which will host the 2015 World Cup and where this team will be featuring. Apart from trying to notch a win, it's about getting experience under their belt, which is primary for the Fiji under-20s. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji under-20s were part of last night's opening ceremony of the tournament. All six participating teams were hosted by the Oceania Football Confederation. As an item for the opening, the Fijians sang a gospel song that grabbed everyone's attention. Fiji plays Amical at 7.30 tonight and you can catch a live commentary on Radio Fiji 2 with Raymond Stoda. This weekend's Rugby League's Nines tournament could be called off if more teams do not register by the end of tomorrow. The Fiji National Rugby League Association is urging teams to register right away. Josephine Navula has the details. Only four teams have registered so far for the Rugby League Nines tournament. Tomorrow is the final cut-off date for registration with the Fiji National Rugby League. If we don't make the numbers by tomorrow afternoon, we'll be cancelling the games. Josefo adds they have played their part and now it is up to the teams. We even have the draws done. All we have to do is to fit in the teams. And uh, we are just waiting for the teams to come in for with their registration fees. The tournament will continue next year 
until a team is selected to compete in the Pacific Games in July in Papua New Guinea. The reason of having this men's tournament was to occupy the, the place because for FNRL uh, previously after the 13th tournament, after the 13th season, that's it for FNRL. The Rugby League Nines tournament is expected to be held at the Super Grammar Grounds this Saturday. Josephine Novula, FBC Sports. Fijian golfers will be competing in the 2015 Pacific Games with their eyes firmly set on gold. Fiji has never won gold in golf, but with the recent PGA tournament held in Natandola, our golfers are optimistic. Josephine Navula has more. Our national teams have learned some tricks of their own after competing against some of the golfers in the world at the Fiji International. As you all know, top knowledge that we hosted the first ever PGA that was held at Natandola. That boosted the, um, you know, the boys' uh, playing capabilities. The scores are improving every day. Ilaisa Lampaimbure adds he is impressed with the commitment shown by local golfers who are part of the team to the Pacific Games. We can see the improvement in their performance, which gives us a you know, very good feeling that they will perform well in the uh, PNG come July next year. Having competed in the Fiji International PGA Tournament, more local golfers now have international ranking. This has inspired many to continue improving their game and move up the ladder. The backup of some other players, they are now rated also in the World Amateur Ranking. The 2015 Pacific Games will be held from the 4th to the 18th of July in Papua New Guinea. Josephine Novula. FBC Sports. And that was your sports for this evening. It's back to Edwin now with business. The government has put forward a proposal to formulate a valuation act that will govern all land and property valuers. Discussions on the act will be part of the valuers conference in Suva this week. Ritika Pratap reports. The regulation of valuers is an issue that the Fiji Institute of Valuers and Estate Management once addressed. The th conference theme is uh, tools of change, legislative options, capacity building, administrative reform and gender equality in integrating land governance in the po post-2015 framework. The objective what we're trying to get over here is for participants to embrace the need for legislative changes to promote uplifting of professional standards because this is what happens. We get a lot of complaints about valuers but there's nothing done. The Institute has initiated discussions with the Lands Ministry through its previous conferences and is willing to work with the government to rectify critical issues in regards to property valuation. We don't have a monitoring program in place. However, the regulation of valuers is by the Valuers Registration Board which is under the Valuers Registration Act and it's government appointed anywhere. So the Valuers Registration Board is appointed by the Minister for Lands and they are the ones responsible for registering valuers. Melvin Anand says the institute is powerless to act on complaints because none have been raised with them formally. A lot of complaints against valuers. However, we don't receive any complaints from customers or from uh, the end users of the reports. There's a lot of media hype about it that they know that the valuers are hiking up prices and all that, but at the end of the day, there's no formal complaint coming to us. So we can't work on anything. The Institute of Valuers looks at the capacity building of its members and currently has 86 electoral members. Their annual conference will be held in Suva on Friday and Saturday. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Generally fine weather prevailed over most parts of the country today. A weak trough of low pressure remains slow moving over the Solomons and extends over to Vanuatu and to New Caledonia. Meanwhile, another trough of low pressure lies east of Vanuatu and extends eastwards over Rotuma to Wallace to Samoa to north of Southern Cooks. A maximum temperature of 32 was recorded in Lambasa today. The other centers recorded slightly lower temperatures. Tomorrow's forecast is fine enough apart from brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands. 
and the further outlook for Wednesday is similar conditions expected elsewhere possible afternoon or evening showers. And our main points once again Prime Minister Voring and Bani Marama says the visit of two global leaders to Fiji this week is a great opportunity for the country. The DPP's office has closed the case against Joseph Ambilitaki who was alleged to have sent indecent and annoying text messages to the Prime Minister and a delegation from the United Arab Emirates Armed Forces arrives in the country tonight for a meeting with the commander of the RFMF Brigadier General Mosese Tikoitonga. To our poll question last week, we asked, are you satisfied with the education reforms announced recently? 75% said yes. And here is the question for this week. Is Fiji's recognition in the international fora improving? Question once again, is Fiji's recognition in the international fora improving? Visit our FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page, FBC News. Or if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. That's the bulletin tonight. Join us again tomorrow. Until then, good night. मेरा चांद मुझे आया है नजर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर छाया है नशा मेरे आंखों पर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर रह जाए ना प्यासा मेरा प्यार मेरे बाहों में भर दे मेरा यार ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर रह जाए ना प्यासा मेरा प्यार मेरे बाहों में भर दे मेरा यार ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर ऐ रात जरा थम थम के गुजर Shandil. Shamil Jega, Hamare Zak, tonight show me Monday to Friday from 7 p.m. to 12 a.m. Milkie Pep. It's why you put your never gonna get it to the heart to come in, honey.